so you want to build some custom headers, but you're also kind of into self-inflicted pain. So you've decided to go with pie cuts. Well, it all starts off with some lines on a piece of pipe, ideally 180 degrees apart. And if you're feeling really nice to yourself, even make one of those lines line up with the weld seam in the pipe and you'll thank me later. Now draw some arbitrary angles on your table and then just start chopping things up at whatever you feel like. Sorry, what's that? You want me to tell you a specific angle to cut things at? I don't want it to look like the custom straight pipe on your friend's cousin's four-cylinder Mustang which is going to sound really cool once the exhaust tapes over all the shitty welds. Don't worry, you've come to the right place. I'm here to enable you. I'd recommend a 7 degree cut or a 14 degree pie. This is a good place to start anyway. You can adjust based on your needs, but I'd recommend keeping each pie at an average length of something consistent, so this will make your life easier later on, and also just make things look nice and consistent. Now, I would recommend using a bandsaw to cut your pie, but if you really want to make things just a little bit more difficult for yourself, you can do as I did, use an abrasive chop saw, so there will be plenty of deburring to do afterwards. This was probably the second most time-consuming part of the project. It came in right behind staring blankly into space and contemplating my life. So now that you've deburred enough pie to end world hunger, it's time to celebrate. Or if you're like me and that just wasn't quite enough pain and suffering for your liking, you can continue to feel pain by slowly burning off your fingerprints as you sand each individual pie cut. Now the government can't find you, and you can't unlock your phone to watch a cat eating some watermelon. Very sad. Pies in hand, my first course of action was to make the collector. Just need some nice slip joints for that. If someone knows a better way, please let me know. Oh right, you could just buy them. Yeah, that, that, that is a better way. Better yet, you could just buy headers. Anyway, I made four elbows like this, and now I just have to remove all the material that looks like not a collector and mathematically speaking, I should be left with one whole collector. Overall, I'd say the collector was quite a bit more difficult than anticipated, especially the grinding to fit part. They all have to be very identical and very 90 degrees for it to fit nicely. If I did this again, I think I would probably make some sort of jig to grind the angles and hopefully that would make things easier, something you could try. But at least I got the hard part of the way, right? Right? Okay, it's time to make my first header. But where do we start? First, we need some sort of plan. My initial idea was to use some stiff but flexible enough wire to sort of bend out the shape of the headers. And then I could you know, figure out what I wanted, and at the same time, hopefully get things pretty equal length. I ended up just staring blankly at things for hours. Then after I figured out approximately nothing, I just started cutting things up. 
These little doohickeys are going to connect each header to their respective exhaust port. It would be nice if I had a larger piece of pipe, which would fit nicely around, but once again, I'm working with what I've got. Lots of time and a very warped idea of how best to spend it. Now the doohickeys are completed, we can embark on our first of four adventures. Our level one adventure, we can call it, consists of pretty much just a bend and a straight bit of pipe leading to the collector. The collector, which I have placed in a place somewhere in space, try not to question it too much. It's really important, but don't question it too much. So I'll make some more pop cuts, polish a straight bit of pipe, and bing bang boom, I'm a quarter of the way done. Right? Right? Now for level two. This one's also fairly self-explanatory. However, we need maximum scavenging. So they need to be equal length. So just, you know, measure things and everything will be okay. But how can I measure a curvy pipe, you ask? Well, you may not know it, but you already have the solution. Remember when I told you to make each pie cut a consistent length and that would help you? Well, you just count your pie cuts and add up the, add up the, the average length of your pie cuts and bing, bang, boom. You got the length of your bend. Yay. What I mean by that average length of your pie cut is if you have the narrowest and the thickest point, basically halfway between that, that's just the average length. I made mine about a half an inch and I just counted them. So now just use your third hand to hold all your curves and your other six hands to measure all the straight pieces and just sort of adjust things until you got the length you want. This is by no means a foolproof method and definitely requires some foresight, particularly when it comes to where you place the collector. I did actually think about that quite a lot, just so you're not making really weird shapes just to try and get things equal length. But with a bit of head smashing and door slamming, you'll get there. Or, or you won't and you'll just not make things equal length. And you know what? That's okay too. You don't have to be equal length, but you do need to be equal length. This one worked well because the amount I had to extend it outwards basically made up for the shorterness of the, the longer piece. So it basically ended up equal length just by that factor. Now, if you're not a robot, you're probably gonna find that from your second header onwards that getting that perfect fit up is gonna get very exponentially harder. And this is actually due to your previous header not being a thick wet spaghetti noodle. I can't make the fit up easy, but I can give you two of the best tips I learned along the way. Tip number one is just breaking things into chunks. With pie cuts, it can be very overwhelming to just have a bunch of pieces and you can, cans are just start from one end and start tacking. You'll make it to your destination, but you're probably gonna have some weird kinks or curves at the end, which aren't so nice. So if you break, break things into chunks and usually it's best to sort of save one piece for last and then you can take your last bit, your last chunk, and just grind it down until it fits. Ideally, usually like a middle chunk, so then you can have the collector end and the exhaust port end fixed in place, and then you just grind the angles down on the ends of your centerpiece, or adjust the pies on it to adjust the angle until you just get that perfect fitment. 
And when this process inevitably fails, you can just go back to the aforementioned head smashing and door slamming. That, that also works great, I've heard. Tip number two I will implement on the third header, which was the first of two very curvy and very scary headers. So curvy, I did slightly increase the angle of my pie cuts, but I kept them at half inch average length. The tip is very simple. It is super glue. Although if you found a tape that was sticky enough instead of super glue, it would probably make your life a lot easier. I found that super glue was particularly essential when making compound curves, curves that twist and bend at the same time. This is actually only possible with pie cuts, which makes them better and so much worse at the same time. I honestly lost track of the amount of times I smashed apart and re-glued together a curve just to very slightly adjust how I clocked each pie cut to change the curve very slightly. Again, it can help to break your curve down into chunks so you're not, once you get it close, you don't break the whole thing apart. You just adjust how you clock a few of the pies and not re-clock the whole thing. Also, this is why you lined your pies up with a weld seam. <laughs> this one's actually not lined up with the weld seam. That's probably why I didn't use it. But yeah. If you line up with the weld seam, it just gives you a reference when you're clocking your pies, because how else are you going to clock your pies? The one problem you will definitely run into with super glue is the massive sticky mess it leaves behind on your nice stainless steel that you want to weld. So if you found some really sticky tape, ideally that doesn't leave residue, instead of super glue, that would probably make your life way easier. But I tried a few different types of tape and they just, it would just fall apart. So super glue it is. I ended up very carefully marking each one of my curves that I super glued and then breaking it all apart, sanding the faces to get all the super glue off and then lining up the marks again and as I tacked it together. You could try tacking things together with the super glue on and then soaking in acetone, but it might take a really long time for the acetone to really get into the cracks and tack the super glue, but it might be worth a shot. But in any case, we have reached the final part of our adventure, our level four header. And this one was the perfect example of fixing both ends to your one to your collector one to your exhaust port and then adjusting the middle to fit in this case i left it straight piece and one pie unglued from the rest and i just adjusted the straight piece on the grinder the other pie was out just for clearance reasons mm, that's a good fit fuck now it's time to do that welding thing and no, I did not back purge, and I'm sure some of you will never forgive me for that. But anyway, sit back and enjoy. Or cringe. Or get angry or something. tips for welding would be don't be stingy with your tacks or they will break and jump from side to side to avoid any warping and tacks breaking. If you're not using filler rod like me, if you don't spend the time on fitment, you will most likely regret it. If you don't have that perfect fit, then yeah, you just blow holes without filler. Also, this project 
I think would be pretty much impossible without some sort of nice flat belt sander or flat grinding surface of any kind. I know what you're thinking, not the side of a zip disc on your angle grinder. I know it's flat. You came here because you want to see some tubes. So here's some tubes. Now, for those of you who don't believe me when I say these headers are indeed equal length, here is some sort of proof. Not perfect, but pretty much all within half an inch of each other. Now I probably should get this thing running so I can find out whether this was a complete waste of time or not. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.